once it actually hit the floor, we got it unboxed and we found a stand for it. And I think within 45 minutes, we had it up, powered, and were actually programming the robot, just doing simple back and forths and pick and place. It was really easy to use. I would say it took a third to half of the implementation time out of it based on the previous experiences I've had. The process uh, of the robots were actually a lot simpler than I had expected them to be. If you can work a smartphone, you can pretty much work these robots. Programming the, the universal robot is very straightforward. Um, anyone with any sort of ability to think logically and can envision a, how a process ought to run could program the robot. The, the screens are laid out friendly, the commands are almost self-intuitive. It comes with a manual that you can consult if you need to, but you don't need much of that. When you push the button on the teach pendant, you can grab the end of arm and move it to whatever position you want, and then once you release it, you can save the position and teach it as a point. It made it a lot faster and easier to program that way. Honestly, if you can, if you can write a to-do list, you can program the robot. It's just simple, down, just from top down logic, and it's, it's fairly simple to do. The most beneficial part of the robot is actually the interface controls. So you're actually right there with the robot and, and you're troubleshooting as you go. So it takes out a lot of time other than me having to come inside the office, run simulations of my programs, take it back out, boot it up, see real time what it's going to look like. You can actually do that from the handheld. Collaborative robot allowed us to have the robot and a human working in the same workspace. They're working in a pendulum type of an operation where they safely can interact. It's a very hand-in-hand -hand kind of an operation between the two. We've got two robots working with humans. Uh, the first robot's actually cutting wires off of the motor field. That's a potential carpal tunnel syndrome application. Um, I mean, you're cutting about 16,000 wires a day by hand. Um, and so we thought that was a great place to put a robot, you know, let them potentially get carpal tunnel. The fact uh, that the robot is a cobot, a collaborative robot, it's important because I have no space in front of my production line. So I have, I have only six foot of uh, space left and uh, it's not possible to install uh, regular safeguarding. So uh, it's why I choose the universal robot on this application. What the, what the universal robot arm now is it is more I would say at least 100% safer. Before, you have to put your hands close to the brake press. And there's a good chance that once in a while, the brake press, you know, some of them do have defaults. Some of could an accident could happen at any time. So with the universal robot, there's no chance of anyone getting injured. In, in our history of automation here, we've used uh, conventional industrial robots. And uh, we had to build uh, you know, a large enclosure, separate the people from, uh, from the robot, um, which it takes a lot of space, um, it's extra cost, it's less flexibility. It is a safety concern. If someone defeats um, the uh, interlocks on, on, on a robot enclosure, we don't have to worry about that with uh, um, the force sensing in the universal robot. I asked our partners, Bross, to show me how the safety system works, and we wrote up a program that allowed me to, to walk in, the, in its way as it swung back and forth. Um, and uh, I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, uh, it, it didn't hurt, and it sensed me immediately and stopped. Uh, uh, just like I'd want it to. The robot's very sensitive to outside force, so we really like that. Because it's one thing, again, to say that the robot can be used without guarding, but it's another to use it safely without guarding. So we came up with the idea to do some sort of mobile force, but the challenge is how do you do that with all the safety enclosures? You know, I came across this idea of a collaborative robot, you know, something that could work with humans that, that you didn't have to be afraid of being around. When our workers come in in the morning, their task is no longer to go do some monotonous task. It's to go take their robot and deploy it to whatever job it needs to do that day. And that robot's going to move all around our sheet metal department while it does that. When we do set up that first job, we'll do countersunk holes. 
uh, that will end up capping. So if it moves to another job and then comes back, it's simply just taking the caps out, remounting the, the robot arm itself. Usually it's going to take us about 30 minutes to get it back in the ground and, and powered up. And then it, after that, it's just as simple as loading that, the previous project. We're able to, to quickly redeploy these robots to completely new tasks in very short order. Um, we have all of the bases that we can transport around uh, on wheels and slide them from press to press and application to application. That's been hugely uh, beneficial to us. Once we realized that a uh, collaborative robot was a viable alternative for us. Of course, we did our homework and checked around the rest of um, the opportunities that were out there from uh, different manufacturers. And we found that for our application, the UR robot was not only uh, the best robot for the application, but it was also the most cost efficient. We've had great financial success with the implementations of these robots uh, to the tune of what we're seeing on, on average for the return on investments is between three and six months. And we were looking at cost, um, ease of implementation, ease of use, and the universal robot seemed to nail it in all those areas. Um, just the, the price point for what they were offering there was uh, extremely competitive. Uh, the accuracy and the design that they had done for the robot was just you know, far above and beyond what we thought anybody else in the, in the market had. That's what we were striving for the whole time, was to find a robot that was flexible, that could be moved quickly and programmed quickly and taken from machine to machine. Um, and so that's what we're utilizing it now for. And we, we estimate the ROI was about six months uh, at its current configuration. When we first started looking into automation, I was surprised to find that we could afford a six-axis robot uh, and a collaborative one at that. I assumed those systems cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. The return on investment on uh, uh, our initial system uh, was less than two months. For us to be able to have that type of success, out of the gate, first times, rookies at this stuff uh, was phenomenal and totally unexpected. Mm -hmm.